Well, for no good reason at all, I decided to buy another electric bike. So the main reason I bought this bike is uh, to use it in the hills in uh, the Eiffel region in Germany. Uh, my parents have a little house there and uh, the annoying thing about mountains is that if you want to do pretty much anything, you have to use a car to get around. Everything's just a little bit too far to walk and using a bike is barely possible, barely practical, like you have to walk most of the uh, distance. So uh, electric bikes are pretty much perfect for those areas. Now this bike has what's uh, known as, well colloquially known as the second generation Bosch mid-drive. This is, there's a uh, motor here. Oh, wait a second, there's a motor here, behind here, a brushless DC motor, not super big, like as big as your hand roughly and a reduction gear set, which is actually nylon. Uh, I was ragging on nylon in my other e-bike motor video, but yeah, Bosch uses it too, and this is like the bee's knees. And then there's a clutch system here that uh, drives the actual crank. Uh, the advantage of this is essentially the motor is directly driving where you would be driving the bike. Uh, for one, this shifts the weight of the motor, which is this is quite heavy, it's like uh, five kilograms, uh, to the middle of the bike instead of at the back of, or right at the front. But also, uh, it takes advantage of any gearing you have, and this bike in particular uh, has an internal gear hub. It's a Shimano Alpine uh, eight-speed gear hub. The motor essentially has extra gears like if you put it in a very low gear suddenly you have way more torque than you could ever uh, expect to have with uh, a direct hub motor in your front or rear hub now you wouldn't be watching this video if we weren't disassembling something and uh, we are we are gonna uh, look inside the motor there is a uh, noise on every pedal rotation and uh, it's supposed to be like a loose bearing somewhere uh, it's it doesn't really damage anything, um, but it is in the clutch mechanism of the um, of the motor, and I believe we have to disassemble the drive side, so the right side of the um, hub motor. <laughs> That's a very unfortunate, because uh, this one has a nice access panel. There are some electronics behind this, but there are already videos about that. Uh, apparently, there is no YouTube video about how to do this fix, so. That's what we're going to do today. We are down to the side plate and I think I should be able to just undo these torque screws and open the side up, have a look inside. It's really hard to see on the video but uh, I saw this on the other side when I uh, opened it up just in private and uh, they are putting some kind of like goo or silicone or something in one of the screws on these motors i think this is this is like an anti-temper thing where like the only way to access the screw is to remove the gunk from inside the screw and um yeah like scoop it out it's really like it's like silicone caulking or something that they put in there yeah, you have to dig it out and only then can you access it with the Torx. Okay. Oh. 
<laughs> okay, it's open now. So first of all, nice O-ring seal all around. It's an actual compressive seal. Very well done. And yeah, even though it's a uh, it's a nylon gear, and honestly, there you shouldn't use nylon gears in high torque applications, but whatever. Uh, it's a very wide gear. This is clearly meant for like ridiculous power transfer. This can easily withstand uh, the types of torque like tens of newton meters uh, that uh, bikes deal with. But uh, let's see how we actually get in here. Like it feels pretty loose. It feels like it's only restrained by the uh, the other side. So maybe if I pull the crank from the other side, uh, I will be able to remove um, this assembly. Now, before we dig deeper, um, you can see here this outline. This is actually where the motor is. It's uh, it's not a big motor. Uh, the motor drives uh, has a little sprocket that drives another nylon gear here. Uh, that drives this little metal sprocket. Looks like an actual machine sprocket to me. And that drives the big nylon gear. So there's actually two reduction gears in there, and that allows them to use a relatively small BLDC motor to uh, to actually get good torque. On, um, on the crank. Now, clearly, so this assembly, this has, has the clutch mechanism in it, right? So that's just a, a, uh, a pull and dog clutch mechanism. I'm still, it's still not clear to me where the actual clunking noise comes from. Uh, so I will probably elect to to take a look in this section, which uh, opens up with uh, with just these uh, torque screws. Well, after opening that one, I'll show you. Really, this just is a cosmetic cover. Uh, the actual motor itself is all still encased. The other side is kind of cool, though. Sorry for the bad angle. Yeah, all the electronics are on this side. Uh, and you can see the big um, plastic sprocket there. So, after having a little bit of a think about it, uh, I guess it uh, really cannot be anywhere else than that uh, main axle assembly. So this, uh, this beast here, sorry for the bad focus. Uh, that really has to be where the issue is and honestly I from the outset it's hard to see exactly what it could be so uh, guess it's internal maybe it's really just the clutch poles and that will be a bummer because I would need a um, I would need something like a bearing splitter to get this open and yeah there's there's plastic components on there too uh, that's that's pretty much a no-go. So I think this is a can't fix. And uh, you would essentially need to order this entire unit uh, new as a replacement to uh, fix the problem. Uh, yeah, that's a bit annoying. Well, I'm really sorry, guys. This is probably the least satisfying repair I've ever done. I've now had in total about 30 kilometers of um, bike riding with the uh, repaired Bosch motor and there's no clunking anymore. But for the life of me, I cannot figure out what I did. Like all I did is essentially disassemble the crank and reassemble it and break a couple of things and then fix a couple of things inside. But that's probably not related. So yeah. I, all I can really say is maybe this is of help for um, other people who wish to repair or disassemble their Bosch mid-drive. 
I should still publish that video about the other uh, front wheel motor and we will be putting new battery cells in that battery making it a 500 watt hour frame battery. I've not seen anybody else do that so that's going to be exciting. Anyway, see ya!